Folks, it turns out that not all common sense gun laws are bad. Stick around to find out why. Hey folks, thank you for watching i5 Tactical again. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something that's got people kind of in hopes uh, for the future uh, as far as 2021 is concerned. Maybe thinking that it's not going to be such a bad year with the amount of things that are are being pushed through the house now mind you if we look at how things have happened in the in the most recent um, election as far as concerns uh, people had especially in the 2a community our main concern was that with the house being primarily ran by Democrats that we would have a hard time getting things to be pushed through or having our Second Amendment rights violated as far as uh, bills that would be passed that are considered common sense as it pertained to Second Amendment laws or what the Constitution states. Well, an article was just published by AmmoLand.com and I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go ahead and read some of that for you guys. Stay with me. AmmoLand.com just published an article. It says that a bipartisan bill uh, would grant national reprocity. <laughs> a bipartisan bill would grant repris, rep, rep, a bipartisan Holy A bipartisan bill would grant reciprocity to concealed permit holders and it has been introduced in the House of Representatives. Now mind you, this bill was introduced, okay? So Representative Richard Hudson created HR 38, okay? It's a concealed carry a concealed carry reciprocity act during Congress's opening day. The bill has a total of 154 co-signers, including Democrats, that have broken the party's anti-gun stance okay now that's huge right so our main objective our main concern uh in the 2a community was that with the house being primarily ran by democrats that we would have a huge influx in people trying to overtake our constitutional rights and overturn the second amendment or create common sense laws uh that would then ban us from having the ability to do things like concealed carry in certain states or uh, what type of weapons we can have. Turns out, the House is the first one to primarily agree by a majority to create a bill that would allow anyone who holds a concealed handgun permit to cross state lines as long as the gun owners follow that state's law. So, huge, right? As long as the residents of the states with constitutional carry could also carry a handgun across state lines, they're allowed to do so. So basically, if you're a law-abiding citizen and you're able to obtain a concealed carry license, you're able to take that license wherever you travel as long as you follow that state's individual laws huge right so national reciprocity uh, would treat concealed carry permits like driver's licenses federal law would actually ban states from discriminating against any gun owner states like new jersey and new york make it almost impossible for citizens to get a concealed carry permit gun owners actually have to show good cause to be able to obtain a permit at the same time, these states don't actually recognize concealed carry permits from other states. Basically, people traveling into those states, once they cross those state lines, have to check their rights at the border. Kind of seems unfair, doesn't it? So the reason behind this? Well, quite frankly, it's simple. Our Second Amendment does not disappear the minute you travel into another state. The Second Amendment is a countrywide constitutional Right. So for that to be infringed upon in any form eliminates the ability for normal everyday citizens like you or myself to be able to exercise those rights wherever we travel. In a statement made from Representative Hudson in a press release, he stated, The Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2021 is a common sense solution to provide law-abiding citizens the right to carry and travel freely between states without worrying about conflicting state codes or erroneous civil suits. I am especially proud to have such widespread bipartisan support for this measure and will work with my colleagues to get this legislation over the finish line. This bill isn't the first time that Representative Hudson has introduced a no National Reciprocity Act. In 2017, the congressman and his co-sponsors were able to push the bill through the House of Representatives. The legislation passed by a margin of 231 to 198, mainly on a party line vote. The bill died in the Senate, however. Republicans believe that they did not have the votes to override a Democratic filibuster. Gun rights activists think that the 2017 bill was the best chance of getting national reciprocity through Congress. K. 
Okay, eight Democrats crossed party lines to co-sponsor H.R. 38. Democrats hold a slim majority in the House by a margin of 222 to 211. One seat is open due to the death of Republican Luke Letlow from COVID-19. It's unclear if enough Democrats will vote to pass the act, but most believe this bill is the best shot at gaining national reciprocity through the House since the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2017. So huge news, right? They're calling this a common sense gun law. Now, if you were to come at me and initially say common sense gun laws, I'm going to think of things that, uh, statements that were made by Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. Regardless of the fact that this bill was initially passed in the House, we're going to face an uphill battle with this when it goes to the Senate, okay? So if you remember in my prior videos, I explained how this all works. Somebody introduces a bill, they vote on it in the House, it then goes to Senate. Senate has to pass that and then it goes to the President for the bill to ultimately be signed. If you follow the things that I follow with our election results, it seems like until things are confirmed and stated and he's sworn in, we kind of don't know what's going on. Really, we don't. I mean, everyday citizens like you and I, we do our jobs and we vote, but who's to say that that's actually what's happening? So what would happen is this goes to the Senate. Now, if we lose Georgia and those two seats that are left over in the Senate become Democratic seats, those are both two anti-gun activists, okay? So what will happen is they will reject the bill and it'll go back to the House to be reworded. Now, if the House passes it uh, through the Senate and it makes it all the way up to the president, if Biden is elected, the problem is that we all know that he's immediately going to veto the bill. Well, I guess we can't say for sure, but most of us think that he's going to veto the bill. Now, if he does so, we're screwed, right? It goes right back to the House and we're stuck in a situation where concealed carry is state by state and they all get to determine federal laws in their own right and determine what's allowed in their state. I get that this is great with some laws, but when it comes to a constitutional right, I think that the federal government having a rule over all the states, that should be law. That should be what carries along state lines no matter where you go. You should be able to travel freely in your own country and abide by those federal laws and still have the same rights that anybody else would have. However, some people don't think so. Regardless of what happens, Representative Hudson vows to continue to push for a national reciprocity law for as long as it takes. So there are people in our House of Representatives that will not stop at no. We can be thankful for that. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Like the video. Leave a comment if you'd like. I'll see you guys next time.